Hello everyone, my name is Philip. I'm a developer advocate on the Flutter team and today I'm talking about performance. And uh, you know, it's funny how like uh, every speaker at a conference like this thinks that their topic is the most important. Um, and uh, it's funny because obviously performance is the most important topic today, right? Uh, so, um, but I'm joking, but not really, because uh, you know, even if you have like the the greatest app with best features and great animations, if the performance isn't good, then that's gonna slash the value of the co the of the of the talk. I'm sorry, of the app uh, a lot. Uh, so let's uh, talk about performance today. Um, today we'll be talking about some basic terminology. Um, and I should preface this, this is an advanced talk, right? So we'll, I'll start with some of the basics uh, so that we can uh, have the same foundation. Uh, but if you're new to Flutter, you should know that Flutter is fi fine, it's fast by default. If you're not doing something crazy, if you're not pushing the boundaries of Flutter, your app should be performant enough. Uh, but if you do have like a very complex app or if you do want to go really in depth or if you are pushing Flutter to the limits, then this might be interesting, especially in the later stage of this talk. So yeah, so we'll start with terminology, um, then we'll talk about some of the basic tools and basic uh, ideas of performance. And uh, lastly, and probably more, most importantly, we'll be looking at a single app and we'll be going through it and troubleshooting some of the performance issues that are there. And I will show you like how you might approach different ones and how, how you might fix those. Um, so yeah, let's start with terminology. Uh, in keeping with the spirit of this talk, all the animations in the presentations are super slow. So enjoy. Uh, all right, so Jank. Jank is something that I didn't know that such a word exists like three years ago and now it's everywhere. So, so just that we have the same vocabulary, Jank is like a visual stutter. It's when you have something that is fluid or should be fluid, like an animation, and then it kind of stutters or like it skips a frame or two and uh, that just not is it's not very visually nice. Um, there is like it, it is theoretically possible that your app is slow in its entirety, like every frame takes a long time. But in practice, this most likely is not going to happen. And most likely, if you have a performance issue, it will be jank, meaning again something that should have been smooth is uh, not. So that's what I mean by jank. Uh, UI thread, as some of you know, uh, every application uh, in Flutter uses at least three threads. UI thread, the main one, which is where you're building your widgets and which is where you have your main dart and stuff like this. Uh, then there's a GPU thread and then there's uh, IO thread. And uh, you're not touching those, uh, but you can also create your own threads for your own computation. The, the reason I'm talking about UI thread here is because if you take too much time in the UI thread, then your app will jank because that's what Flutter uses. The, that, that's where the Flutter framework is running, right? So UI thread. Tracing is the idea of um, kind of recording what your app does at what time and then seeing, like, for example, how each computation, how much time it takes. Uh, so on the level of code, it looks something like this. You can do a uh, timeline. Timeline is a, a class that comes from um, dot colon developer. And um, it's, so it's uh, visible from everywhere. And you can say timeline dot start sync and say this 
computation starts here and it starts or finishes there, right? You will not be using this uh, too much because Flutter actually does this for you in the most important areas. So uh, you're fine, but, but this is how, how it looks like in, in Flutter code as well. And then on the side of the consuming the tracing uh, events, you will have some kind of timeline, and the timeline will say, at this point, you started my computation, and th at this point, you ended the computation. And so therefore, you can be like, oh, so it took like 0.8 milliseconds to do this computation, and now I'm, I can optimize it, or maybe I don't need to because it's fine. Uh, you know, so this, this is what tracing is for, and we'll be doing basically everything that we'll be doing today is tracing. Flame chart is basically taking this timeline of events, uh, of tracing events, and as you can see, if you have a timeline like this, uh, it pretty quickly gets very gnarly, and it's like, oh, so what starts where? Um, even though there's just two events, really, in this timeline, it's already pretty busy, right? Uh, so flame chart is someone clever some long time ago uh, came up with this charting, which is basically just if there's some event that takes some time, you will just uh, build, like have a little bar that goes from the start to the end, and then if there's another thing, you will again have a bar, and so. Uh, just by looking at this, this is like the simplest flame chart possible. So by looking at this, you see that build, uh, the execution of build took this much time, and during build, we were in foo, uh, and that took this much time, and basically is most of the execution time of build was spent in foo, right? So that's a flame chart. This is, uh, uh, this is how the easiest one looks like. A more normal flame chart that we'll be seeing today looks like this. I think it's called flame chart because if you look at it like uh, bottom up, it kind of looks like a flame, um, but I don't know. Um, so flame chart. Okay, and last thing, trade-off, especially in performance, that's very important. Trade-off is basically a compromise. When you have two things that you need to kind of uh, well, trade off between. Uh, so in performance, uh, it's often, oh, uh, like, on one hand, I want my app to have a thousand particle effects every time I do something. On the other hand, I don't want people to have bad performance or for the app to uh, consume too much battery. Uh, and, and resources, right? So, and there's a trade-off, and you have to choose. Uh, and th there's never a, like a, almost never there, um, uh, um, uh, an easy uh, solution. You you have to uh, compromise. Another classic trade-off is CPU versus memory. So, if you aggressively cache then your CPU, you will probably save some CPU cycles, uh, but on the other hand, you will need more memory. So that's a trade-off. Okay, so we are at tools and basics, and I will skip that. <laughs> um, all right, so um, if I come to you and I say, let's profile this app, um, and you see this, you should be like screaming, and, and there should be a riot here uh, because of two things. One, debug mode. Never profile in debug mode. Debug mode is by default is much slower than, than production mode. It does not uh, have any relation almost to the actual uh, performance of your app. So never do that. Second, this is a simulator or emulator. Uh, again, emulator is not indicative of how your app will actually look like when you run it in on a real device. So if you do profiling, do it in profile mode, and do it on a real device. Uh, another basic thing uh, is just, it's kind of obvious, but avoid work in the UI thread. You can completely avoid work in the UI thread because then you don't have an app. Um, but, uh, but like, if you can make stuff either go to a different isolate, uh, meaning a different thread, or if you can just, uh, I will show you some ways to, you know, don't rebuild um, widgets that you don't need to and stuff like that. 
Also, minimize use of expensive widgets. I will, again, I will tell you later what these are. These are things like uh, backdrop filter and stuff like this. That doesn't mean that you should not use them at all, uh, but it might mean that you will be more, uh, you know, intentional in, in using those. Uh, some tools, so there's performance overlay. Some of you probably know this. This is where you ask Flutter to, uh, on top of showing the app itself, also show how long each frame took to build. And there's a, at the top, there's the GPU time, and at the bottom is the UI time. Then there's the track widget builds, which is something that is currently, I think, only in Android Studio. I will show you how this works later, but it's a really good way to kind of get an idea of how much you're rebuilding everything. Uh, there's Dart DevTools, which is kind of this up and coming suite of tools that help you optimize your app. Um, it, it's, it's, some things are not yet ready there, but it's, it's definitely getting there very fast. Uh, there's also Observatory, which we'll be using today, uh, which is this like older tool for uh, not only performance optimization, um, uh, but you know it, it has a bunch of stuff. Uh, and the last tool I want to say is sometimes instead of looking at just metrics, it's nice to look at your app in slow motion, um, and uh, for that, because like. You know, our eyes aren't perfect, and so sometimes we miss some of these skipped frames. Um, so it's nice to have a recording of your app in slow motion. The good news is that if you have a mobile phone that was built in the last few years, uh, you, not days, um, you have a high-speed camera. Uh, it's like uh, on Android, you just go like to video and you have some something called a slow motion mode, I think. And then that creates this kind of stuff. And this is eight times slower than real life. And so if you have a jank there, you will definitely see it here. There's no jank in this way. OK, uh, so that's today. And now let's go live profiling. But before we go there, um, I'll, I have to give you some introduction. So I made this app which is like really terrible. Basically, everything about it is terrible. And you might be thinking, but Philip, all your apps are terrible. <laughs> That's what's new. And, uh, and I say this is intentionally terrible uh, because I want you to, to see all the, all the things that can go wrong, right? Um, which brings me to this. In this talk, if a performance issue is a proverbial uh, uh, needle in a haystack, this talk is like this, like, oh, where's the needle? You know, uh, it's somewhere in the haystack. Uh, in real life, it's like this. And it's like, oh, you have up to 10,000 needles in this haystack, go, you know. Um, so don't think, um, you know, don't think this is, what you'll see today is indicative of actual, uh, you know, work with, uh, with performance. On the other hand, if I didn't do it this way, if, if I had a more real app, this wouldn't take like 45 minutes, it would take eight hours, and we would be kind of going through a lot of code that has nothing to do with performance. So, so this is, I think, better. Uh, another caveat, like if you're like me, after this talk, you will go to your app and try to optimize everything, and uh, um, that's not a good idea. Please don't prematurely optimize. Only optimize things when you actually know they are a performance issue. Um, uh, which, uh, you know, it's just uh, a good thing. And that also means measure. If you have an optimization problem that you, like, a, first you have to look at something like the timeline view or something like this to see, oh, that is actually an uh, optimization, I'm sorry, performance issue. Um, and also, if you do some, do some optimization, uh, measure before and after to see what you actually achieved. Uh, so maybe you will make it a little bit faster, but you will also make your code a lot less maintainable. And if you made something 1% faster uh, for, you know, and it's just, again, trade-offs. So measure. 
Uh, I actually, if you want something like uh, continuous measurement, uh, then I wrote this article last year uh, that's exploring this. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can definitely uh, read that. All right, so finally we get to the actual part where we go and run the app. So I will flutter, you, can you see this? Yeah, I should probably look at this. So what do you see here uh, is this real device, okay? Uh, it, it is just going through here, and so it will probably not be 60 frames per second, but whatever. Uh, so you can do flutter run dash dash profile, which will run it in profile mode. And f for, again, this is an advanced talk, no, normally you wouldn't do that, but uh, you can do also dash dash trace skia which gives you a lot more information about what's happening in the GPU thread. Uh, we'll use that later. So I do this, and then we wait. Ah. That's the bad part about um, performance optimization. You don't have hot reload because you're in profile mode, so stuff uh, takes time. Okay, so we have this app, and basically how it works is um, it is always like two, um, uh, it's like every third page in this page view has some performance issue. Not this one, this is just a welcome page. Um, and uh, so we'll do some stuff. So we're, we, we ran Flutter Run Profile, and it's, as you can see here, it tells us, oh, observatory debugger and profiler is on this address. So we'll open this address. And uh, uh, that's the observatory that gives you a lot of information, but today we'll be only looking at this, the timeline, okay? So this is the timeline. Uh, that's a pretty small resolution, that's gonna be fun. And then uh, we, I, I just uh, tapped the Flutter developer profile, which is just, you know, doing some um, presets for me. And now, if I do some things with the app, I can refresh the timeline, and then I can just go around and look at what's what's happening here, right? So uh, I can I can zoom in on all the things, and uh, we'll we'll see later how you know how this all works. So that's the timeline, uh, and that's how it works. Um, then uh, you can also see here for detailed help message, press H. So that's what I'll do. And uh, it will give me, among other things, a um, tip to, I can show the performance overlay by hitting Shift P, which I'll do now. So you can see here, now I have a performance overlay. Okay. So this is, as you can see, if, if, if it's down, that's fine because then we have, uh, we didn't skip any frames, which is cool. Um, and the next one I want to see, by the way, you can do all of these things without using the command line, right? Like you can, if from Android Studio, you can run your Flutter app in profile mode, that's, that's cool. Uh, but what you can do, as far as I know, is do this. To enable timeline events for all widget build methods. Um, and that's pressing A, so that's what I'll do now. You can't see any difference, but later in the timeline we'll see a lot more detail. So if you, uh, and again, advanced, like you, do, you probably don't need this normally, but if you really want to go inside, then, then just do this. Okay, so uh, let's go and explore the app. So we have these two kind of dummy page views just so that you can see how it should look like. And then if I go to the next one, you will see a little bit of jank. Hopefully, I don't know if you saw that. But you definitely see this, this right here, right? This took way too long uh, for one single frame. I'll do it again, and this, one, this time I will clear my timeline so that I don't have, um, uh, don't have a lot of stuff there. And now I do D. And it's still a lot of time. Uh, so I refresh. And I see a bunch of stuff here. And 
the GPU isn't really interesting for us now, but you can see there's, um, so this is a timeline, right? So this is time. Uh, these are the frames. And that, that's a lot of things happening here. Um, this was one of the script frames. And as you can see, okay, so blue page took a long time, and there was a lot of building here, and just a bunch of stuff was happening. So let's look at the code. So we are in blue page. Yeah, we are there. Okay, and so this is just a regular stateless widget. Uh, there's some rounded card, which is this thing. And then there's a list view that has 10,000 items in it, uh, which we built immediately. And it's not just that we're building uh, 10,000 widgets. We're actually calling this method 10,000 times. And this method creates one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine widgets. So it's 90,000 widgets in this one frame that were created, right? Uh, that, um, which is not great. Um, and again, haystack, you know, that, that kind of thing. Like, the, you would normally not see something like this. Um, but this is something where, uh, A, you should probably use list view builder here instead of creating the whole long, um, you know, list of widgets in one go. And also, even if not, um, if you have something this complex, nine widgets, inside of padding and stuff like this, maybe you want to create your own stateless widget. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to actually do this, but uh, you could just say, you know what, this all goes here, right? And then here I just, in this place, I just do like, you know, my widget. And suddenly, it's still not great because we're use, we are creating 10,000 widgets here, but it's just 10,000 widgets and not 90,000 widgets. Okay, so uh, let me uh, do that. Um, let's go to a different failure here. So uh, let me again clear this so that we don't have too much happening there and go here. Okay, wow. Another big spike here. Um, so what's happening here? Again, we can refresh and we can see what's, what's going on. And again, we see this huge thing happening here. And we see, okay, so a bunch of really long build methods were, uh, were done. And this is a, a little different. So what's happening? It's yellow. And we see this is not the same case. Like we're only doing a little bit. This is not actually 10,000. This is more like a few. And we're, we're doing a little bit of these. And if you look at the item line, it's not really, it looks at least in first, for first uh, time, it looks pretty okay, right? Like just a container with a row and expanded. Why is it taking so much time to, to build? And so we could look at the code, but let's do it through here. Uh, one cool thing that you can do in the timeline is uh, just selecting the whole thing. If I can do that. Damn it. Wow. What's going on? Um, I may go. I may need to go to like a full screen view. I normally don't have it in this small of a wow. Hmm. Did it ask for M? Okay, let's let's try again. Um, so, bam, and refresh. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's what I needed. Okay. Um, so if you select a bunch of stuff uh, in the timeline, you will get these things at the bottom, and one of these is samples, which is basically like where did uh, at different times what where did we spend our time during this this time? Ter terrible English. Wow. Um, Anyway, so we, ha we th see things like draw frame, which is not really that interesting. That's, that you'll see that everywhere. Truncated is just uh, that, that part, the, the, um, that method was truncated, the name was truncated, but you can see, you know, again, not very interesting. Uh, but we see we spend a lot of time in something called Fibonacci. Uh, hmm. Uh, okay. So let me just go back to, uh, can I? Okay. Um, so let's see, is there a Fibonacci here? Oh yeah. Um, and it's, it turns out that there's a number here, which is actually a Fibonacci number, uh, which is computed in the least efficient way possible, um, which is our problem here, right? And so we might, A, we might uh, first ask why we do like why do we have a Fibonacci number there? Um, but we all can also make it a little uh, more efficient. Uh, we could also, as I sh showed you before, we can be like timeline, um, import this from Dart developer, uh, start sync, and something like you know make subtitle, uh, and then do timeline finish sync. And now, if I, I don't, I'm not going to do it now because that would take too much time, but if I re, like, um, finish the app and, re, like, do Flutter Run again, uh, n now my timeline would have this make type title there. So, so I, I could actually see and measure how long it took, and I could be like, okay, I, I need to make this much, much faster. But in this case, why do we have a Fibonacci here? Okay, so... Let's go somewhere else and do another one. Oh, this is actually um, this is another thing. So here we have a functionality, uh, super important. Uh, we have uh, a lot of items here that we can scroll through, and then we can uh, tap this, and it will rotate. And you can see that's pretty terrible. <laughs> um, so what's happening there? Let's look at the code. Uh, so this is green, and uh, if you know a little bit about animation builders and, and animations in general, uh, you almost immediately see the problem here, but basically it's, we have an animation builder, uh, we have the rotation animation, and then we have the actual builder callback, and in that callback for every frame, we are creating transform rotate with a current value, and then we're creating this list view with 20,000 um, paddings and tags inside, right? Not great. So, um, and again, we could look into the timeline and it would kind of give us the, that thing. Uh, there's also this functionality that I wanted to show you, uh, which only works in, um, uh, in, no, no, no. where do we have it? which only works in debug mode, and I'm not going to go to debug mode now, but um, it's, if you, if you are in debug mode and you go to Flutter performance, you, at the bottom you have track widget rebuilds, and now whatever you do with your app in real time, it will show you in the last frame how many times did we, uh, did, did any of the widgets on the page uh, be rebuilt. Um, so in this case, like, uh, I can click on here and see like, oh, last frame, so every frame, we're building 19 of these uh, text widgets, which is probably not what we want. We, we are only rotating stuff, but we don't want to rebuild the whole thing every time, right? So uh, this, is, this only works in debug mode. Uh, so, um, again, what we want to do here is we want to use the kind of the child builder pattern here. So all of these animated builders and lots of other widgets coming with Flutter uh, will have this uh, 
well, they, they will give you a context and they will give you a child. The child is a widget that you can um, kind of give it here. So I have a child and I'll put all of this here because we only really want to build it once. And then as we rotate, uh, that, that's just, we just want to build this transform rotate widget. And now this child will always be this list view, right? So we now, instead of doing it every frame, we're doing it once at the start, and then we're just putting the child here. You'll see this a lot. Uh, this is why you always, almost always have in these builders, you have a child, and uh, this is why it's a really good idea to, to use it. Again, if we, if we recompile the app, you would see the, uh, now it's, it's not as terrible as, as it was before. Okay, oh yeah. So now you see a, a little different issue, and that is mostly in this area Oh, we do don't. You don't see any issue, okay? Um, so um, you see a bunch of stuff at the top, which is the GPU uh, thing. Uh, let's look at the timeline. Um, if we may, okay, yeah. Refresh. Hopefully we'll see it. Yeah, and you see uh, a bunch of stuff is happening here. Uh, you, you see things like up, upload raster image. Um, this is Skia, like uh, create texture, write pixels, a bunch of stuff that is happening here um, outside the main thread, thankfully. But still, you know, uh, even the GPU thread can make your app jank. So what's happening here? Uh, we're in, I think this is orange, yeah. Um, so this is just, a, again, a list view with some small avatars of my face. And uh, you can see, okay, so this is like 70 times 70 pixels, and we're using these assets, right? So let's look at the assets. Um, assets, Philip, one. Wow, three megabytes. Uh, lots of pixels, and then we use. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's not do that. Um, and then we use it for 70 times 70. Not great. So just by looking at this, if you see a graph like that, and and if you look at the timeline and you see uh, stuff like lots of things happening here, like concurrent worker, image from compressed data, that is basically the tracing telling you, hey, like I'm doing a lot of stuff with images here. Um, so you want to, um, in this case, the, the easy solution would be to provide a thumbnail image that is actually, you know, 70 times 70. And uh, so we don't spend all this time uh, like decompressing the image, like reading the image, three megabytes times five, then decompressing it from JPEG, and then making it small and putting it into a, sm a small thumbnail. Um, okay. So let's go to the next thing. Oh, so this is fine, right? But now if we compute, you see terrible, a terrible jank there. And, you know, the jank is like, I can do whatever I, but it will just be unresponsive. So what's happening there? Uh, again, we, we could look in the timeline and I can promise you, you would see a huge chunk of something uh, in the UI thread. Uh, so let's look at pink. And uh, so here we see, so what's happening when we tap the compute button? Uh, we are starting some computation. And this is, this is just for show, basically, right? Uh, first, we set state the result to null, so that will show the little circular progress indicator. Then we delay for 200 milliseconds, so, just so that you see that little like start of the progress indicator. And then we do something, <laughs> again, a Fibonacci. And, uh, and then we delay again so that you see the, the rest of the animation. Uh, the, the reason I do this is because if I, 
if I don't have the this and this, then it would just like it would just jank. It would just not do anything, and then it would show which which doesn't look like it's janking. But as you can see, it is actually janking. Um, so uh, in this case, the 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 obvious solution is to not do Fibonacci in the main thread again. Um, but this looks like we're actually using it. So what you can do is the, probably the easiest way to create a new thread and in the thread do some computation is to use the compute method. So uh, that's something that Flutter gives you. And that's just a method coming with, I think, Flutter Foundation. And it will take uh, a function and some data. And it will, you can await this and it will give you back the, the result. Uh, what what it, it does on the, um, you know, at the big round is it will actually create a thread for you and it will run this in that thread. This will not make the computation faster, of course, because you like first have to create the thread and then you, you have to do all this stuff, uh, but it will not block on the UI thread, which is what we want. Okay, so again, if we recompile it now, this would, this would still take some time, but the circle progress indicator will just continue running. Okay. Oh, so expensive widgets. Uh, here you can see, um, you know, a bunch of stuff that is, let's see the timeline. Um, so refresh. Um, and you can see the, uh, the GPU thread is busy, and it's busy with things like, and again, this is a lot of uh, stuff, but uh, draw bitmap, uh, there is probably, um, there is shadow somewhere around here, and wow, you know. And the thing is, uh, the reason for this is that we just added, this is brown, I think. Uh, we just added shadows everywhere, like every text, every glyph in the text has a little shadow which kind of, uh, you know, underlines it and stuff like this. So this is just like us being a little weird. Um, and uh, we should probably think about like maybe not having this many shadows everywhere, right? It's still fine, it's, this doesn't actually jank, uh, but you know. Uh, don't do that. Oh, uh, talking about expensive widgets, this is Blur. So uh, I think this is Indigo. Yeah, oh, yes, so this is Backdrop Filter. So whenever you have Backdrop Filter, uh, if I rotate this, you know, terrible. Uh, and, th and this is because basically what Flutter needs to do if you do something like this is it will need to like lay out and render everything below the backdrop filter and then it will take it and then it will go through some you know filter imaging and stuff like this so uh, again this, this is probably better if you either don't do it at all or try to do it in a different way does not mean that you should never do a background backdrop filter but maybe don't do it like on every frame from scratch so that's another one. Um, and then, I do still have time. Um, this is a different kind of issue, and that this is basically memory. So we've been talking about GPU and CPU. Um, what about if you have a leak or something like this? So in this case, we don't actually have a leak, but we see that for what this is, it's actually you know doing quite a lot of um, stuff. And uh, let's see. If I can show you, um, let's see. Uh, I will need to run DevTools from here and uh, open it here. Uh, you normally don't need to do this because DevTools is accessible from an IDE, but uh, so just ignore this. And uh, let's go to memory if I can. Hey. Oh, okay. And so what's happening here is 
you can see like we're not actually leaking memory because it's it, the the top line the capacity line isn't going up but we're doing a lot of this like oh we're creating a lot of new things and then we're clearing that and again and again and again um, if i do a snapshot here it will give me like w where are the most you know kilobytes and what what are we actually what do we have in the memory and we see immediately that uh, 183 kilobytes um, at that exact time was was taken by date format and date format is not something that you should have 2000 off um, so let's see what what's happening there um, we can go to lime and we see that there is a timestamp. So for every of these little events, we are creating a timestamp. And uh, for, for it to work, we need some kind of date format that we will then use to kind of actually show the formatting. Um, but the, the unfortunate thing is that as we create each of these timestamps, this is an instance um, uh, field on the class. So every time you create a timestamp, you will also create a date three date formats for each of those, which is probably not what you wanted. So in this case, just making the static is, is fine. And instead of like 2,000 <laughs> of these, uh, you will just have three. Um, and so we fixed uh, a problem. All right. Uh, and lastly, but not least, Let's talk about uh, how things look like. So b without telling me, have a look at this and think about what you think is more performant or faster, A or B? Faster, mostly. So, wow, I, I see it's actually uh, pretty janky on the, on the screen, but not, not in, my, uh, in my app. So is it A is it A faster or is B faster, <laughs> right? So it was a trick question, of uh, course, because they both are the same length. They both uh, take 300 milliseconds to complete, but B definitely seems faster. And this is just because of the curve that I'm using. So this is a linear curve. This is the default. This is the, I think this is uh, cubic um, ease out. And that's all it takes sometimes. So there is no performance issue with A. But A kind of feels sloppy and slow, but B feels fine. So experiment with the curves. A, even just that can make your app look a lot faster or, and a lot, lot just res more responsive. Um, uh, that, I think, uh, concludes what I was trying to show today. If I can go back to these, okay. Uh, all right, so we talked about some terminology, we talked about some basic tools and live profiling. I wanna again say by default Flutter is fun and it's, it's fast enough, uh, but if you really want to push it, uh, you might wanna look at these things that I've shown you and uh, uh, I don't think we have time for questions. We have one minute. Uh, but anyways, um, thank you for listening. Thanks.